Cisco email security, forged email detection. All right, so we all know this is a big one, right? This is where someone wants to send a men message and they forge the sender address or the from address and they make themselves appear like they're someone of an executive, C-level folks, a financial controller, etc. right? And it's a big part of phishing campaigns. The idea here is for me to send a, a message to maybe an employee and get them uh, concerned about whether or not they, they need to respond, right? Um, get them nervous that this is critical and needs to be addressed. So the first task in tackling uh, this would be to identify individuals in the organization that we feel would be leveraged or used in a phishing campaign. And then what we'll do is we'll create a couple of um, a, a dictionary with those elements, right? So, or those individuals. So we'll, we'll, we'll show that in a second. So low volume targeted threats can be difficult to detect. We know that, especially in email, knowing that's the number one vector. Um, forging and spoofing email is very easy to do. And we'll show you an example of that. Uh, it could be done within the LAN. It could be part of an external uh, environment, whether you're using Trojans, um, specifically forged email is used uh, with spam and, spam and phishing campaigns. So this is going to impersonate an individual, an employee, but we're going to do it from the outside. So the very first thing, like always, let's do a quick test. So here we're going to select um, the individual that we're trying to impersonate. In this, in this case, it's crobbins at cisco.com. Um, and we're going to send this to Alan. We'll give it a subject name and we'll give it something, you know, a little, with a little bit of meat, right? Maybe an Excel spreadsheet in there. If you needed something paid for or you wanted someone to pay uh, a large sum of money, you might put some criticality around this. You might even use some language. Um, but you would want to be, you'd want to create the message like the individual that you're impersonating, right? Um, because you don't want to trigger any alarms. So here what we're saying is, you know, we've got to make a payment, 50,000 US. Here's the details. Let's make it happen, right? And again, we sign it very much like the individual would uh, that we're impersonating. All right, so this part's pretty easy, right? And all we're doing is we're spoofing or forging that from address, right? what the user's actually going to see. Now this could also include things like an attachment, right? In this case, we're trying to get a payment out of the individual, but this could be a link, this could be an attachment, um, whatever. Um, again, and that might contain malware or malicious code for us to take advantage of the asset. All right, so very quickly we'll send and receive, and all we wanna do is just confirm what the message actually looks like, looks like here. All right, so we can see um, here that in the, the message, we can see it crobbins at cisco.com. Now we get a little more detail in the actual message pane, but this is what tricks users, right? Is that from, uh, from header or that friendly name there. So what we're gonna do, let's create that dictionary and so what we'll do is we'll create this dictionary with names of high profile figures that are most likely to be targeted um, by this attack or any other similar attack, right? So content dictionaries are groups of words or entries that work in conjunction with the body scanning feature on the solution and are available to both content which we're doing here, content filter and message filters. Message filters are underlying, they're done through the command line, um, but they're really quick and fast and they get rid of all the other scanning uh, that might have taken place with a message, right? So they uh, increase performance. So we've added our list of users, we'll move them over. Um, just to cl clarify, dictionaries can also be used to define uh, scan messages, message headers, message attachments for terms, included in the dictionary in order to take appropriate action, right? And this might fall in line with corporate policies. 
Um, so this is this task here. So we'll create this. Um, once we're done this, we'll have a dictionary. Again, as I said in many other videos, when, when we're talking specifically to the email security appliance, nothing is saved or in use until we either, well, we've got to, we've got to submit and commit the changes, but we also, in this case, because it's a dictionary, it's like an object, we've got to use this in, in some type of uh, content filter and then apply that to a policy itself. We're going to go through all, all, all the steps to make this uh, a workable solution. So we created the dictionary file, we've saved them off, we've captured the terms that are, are most relevant, and we'll go to uh, text resources. So we're gonna create a custom disclaimer. This has already been done in this case, but we'll walk through it. I believe I've already got this one in play. And so what we'll do here though, it's very simple, right? But this is just saving you watch me type out um, the words, right? But we'll create that custom disclaimer that will be inserted into the email of an intended target, right? Uh, this task will review the warning that is presented to the recipient of the email with a custom text advising them of potential inconsistencies within the message, right? So the idea here again is, is that we're going to educate the user. We're going to make sure that we include things in there that's going to help the user make hopefully the right decision. So now that we've got this text resource, we've got this dictionary, right? We're ready to rock and roll and build out our content filter. Now remember, the content filter has to be applied. In this case, an incoming content filter would have to be applied to an incoming mail policy. So again, nothing's happening until we um, complete that task. So what we'll do here is we'll um, go through and create the content filter, you give it a name, you know, I ultimately you want to give it a good description. And then we'll add a condition. Now the first condition we're going to add is and actually the only um, decision or a condition that we're going to actually make is um, we're going to add that exact so that, that content dictionary, so that's that here. And then messages that are potentially forged, you, uh, and, and we're gonna leverage our similarity score. So anything from one to 100, obviously the higher the similarity is uh, of those, those words within the dictionary, the, the more likelihood or the more positive the result. So we're saying at least 70, right? And then from here, what we're gonna do is we'll add a header. And in this case, we're going to prepend to that header, possibly forged, right? And we're going to look at that when we actually send the, uh, the test message after we've completed our configuration. So you're going to see what that looks like, but that's just prepending right away up in your face, you know, possibly forged. You might even want to put that in caps. All right, so we have... A, a, a that's one action okay uh, and then we're gonna do a second action and if you've probably already gone where's that disclaimer this is where we're gonna add that disclaimer to so we're trying to it's a one-two punch here right we're adding the uh, or pre pending uh, that possibly forged on the subject and then we're also inserting within the body the disclaimer itself all right, like before, we got to submit, right? And then we have to commit that change. Now, again, like I've said before, you can do all of these changes and then commit at the end, right? You don't have to do all uh, committing every step of the way. Um, I'm doing it, uh, you know, maybe good practice in regards to making sure you got things like auditing and, full, uh, you know, every step that you're submitting, you're putting some comment around it or wrapper to allow anyone else that might be viewing those changes to understand what took place. All right, incoming content filter, done, check. But remember, it's not in use, right? We haven't actually leveraged it yet. So let's go into our incoming mail policies. And 
then from here, we, you know, got anti-spam, anti-virus, anti-malware, gray mail, outbreak filters. But the one we care about right now is we're going to add content filters. And we'll give that a quick check. Forged email messages is the content filter that we've just built. And like every other task, we need to commit that change. So once we commit the change, we can begin or proceed with our testing. So pretty easy change, right? Or uh, pretty easy element to add to help guide uh, some of your users for, for things like uh, phishing uh, or some types of spam attempts, right? Um, just, just to get them to be a little more aware of what might be happening without having them do the work themselves. All right, so let's log in to the uh, email security appliance. And like all other videos, we're going to tail the mail log so we can see um, messages as they come in and see what they look like from the CLI. And once we got that ready, let's go ahead and, and send our message again to Alan. All right, so let's rock and roll here. Now this is through an RDP uh, session that I built this um, and I'm actually in a very remote location using satellite. So if it do does render a little bit slower, that's, that's um, probably why. All right, so we're gonna do from crobbins at cisco.com. We'll go to Allen. And we'll go ahead and put a subject in there, immediate payment required. Need this to happen, right? We want this to happen now. We want Alan to think that he has no other reason but to execute the ask here, right? We'll paste this in, save ourselves some time, and then we'll send it off. All right, so we can see right here, forged email detection on from header with a score of 100 against the dictionary entry C Robbins. So we know that that's matched. If we come back in and we go ahead and send receive so we can see the inbox of Alan. Should see the new message pop up. And right away we can see things like possibly forged, right, is in the email itself. And we also see that warning message. Right, so you can see crobbins at cisco.com and then in the subject line, it says possibly forged. And then there's that prepended message, right? in the actual message body, right? This message may be fraudulent, please verify, right? So again, we're just trying to educate the user to have a quick peek before they go ahead and execute the request, right? Or open an attachment or open a URL. Now, this could be layered with other capabilities, right? If you have AMP or advanced malware protection and there was an attachment, we have time to check and see the disposition of that file. There's AV engines. We could also look at things like, um, uh, URLs and we could remove them right or defang them so there's all other measures that may have taken place this one was specific to an, a request to make a payment and they gave instructions of what that payment is so there wasn't any other element other than the forged request 
so here we are we can see you know you can check forged email detection we can see there's one of them and again like other videos if we go ahead and drill into each one of these if you had multiple you would go into message tracking um, and then be able to really hone in on that specific message so here we're saying forged email detection executive name uh, C Robbins uh, we do a quick search here again uh, and there's that message so we can go ahead and show details and again this is more of the same right this is already what you're see you've seen in the CLI but again I'm just showing you multiple places you may not always you know be in the CLI etc and as you go down you can see you know everything else is negative right advanced malware So you can see it said adding header, right? So it, again, it, it, we know that it was sent, but we've added some information to educate the user. Easy peasy.